Hi everybody, welcome back. Another fantastic episode of Nuts and Bolts here. Do you know this is episode 59? It felt like only like a little while ago we were talking about episode 50. Yeah, it just creeps up. Although I do say you you ran a couple of those solo. You've mm. you've been you've been carrying the flag for us. <laughs> oh, it's it still feels like it's crept up because like ten episodes is ten weeks, and that's a lot. Like that's almost three months. And yeah, because I'm trying to remember. I think for the fiftieth episode, uh, I I got to speak to Rusty for one of the LCO oh, casts yes, about yes, um, yeah, yeah, about the work he was doing to. Um, to foster the next line of talent for LCO casters. Um, but yeah, that feels like ages. Even like the end of the LCO feels ages ago, but DreamHack wasn't that long ago. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything was, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, really. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it feels like, you know, oh, I'm heading to a mace place. Where is it? Just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I used yes. to say that about a friend. He lives in a town called Carnarvon, or used to live in a town called Carnarvon, which is like 900 k's north of Perth. And we just said, oh, yeah, he's just around the corner. Yeah. We we did the math. Like, he was eight roads away from where I was, but just two were like 500 kilometer highways. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was eight corners away. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But anyway, uh, we got a bit to talk about tonight. We've got, of course, we've got some World of Tanks uh, news. Round four kicks kicks off last week. Um, and the last round of the first round robin finishes up this week as well. So that's going to be exciting. We'll have a bit of an idea about where the teams are uh, sitting, um, as well as some, uh, some news about order and some Rainbow Six South Division, um, APAC South Division, sorry. So that's going to be fun. I can't wait to talk about it. So let's jump in. Let's have a chat about uh, some water tanks. So let's um, let's have a look at some of the the matches that were happening on there. So first up, we had uh, the Panthers versus Action X. And Natty, I would like to apologise again because Perth did win. Um, came in with three one win over the the Action X there. Um, look, if 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 you had anything to do with it, shame on you. Yeah. But I. <laughs> I secret- don't think you did, unless you didn't change your socks or something. Yeah, I secretly <laughs> went went around and like because apparently I found out last week Donga Lord lives in WA, so I secretly found out where he lives and just like hobbled him. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. No. Oh I no, just, you went all Tonya Harding no, on no, That's right. I bro- <laughs> broke a couple of his fingers, so he was playing with his toes. No, no, I didn't do that. Sorry, sorry, Donga. Apologies to Donga Lord, but no. Look, um, Panthers were looking. A little bit slow on some games. This game in particular that you can see on Ghost Town here, they they rotated a couple of times trying to find a way in. Um, but it, it did pay off for them. They they found, a, 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 they isolated a tank and were able to remove them and then isolate fights as well that just, gave, where they had the numbers advantage. So it worked well for them in this particular fight. Um, and they, they were just able to find find the right shots at the right time. Um, and and the win that Action X got was a timed win on defense. So look, I, I like to say they're, they're still wins, but they're not the best wins, if you get what I'm saying. Because yeah, a lot yeah. of the time, it's just a it's the defensive it's not tank. Decisive, yeah, or the it's, yeah. it's more like the defensive tank running and hiding rather than just an out and out win because of good strats or good fire, good focus fire and isolation of enemy tanks, you know. Hey, hey, fight seeking shelter when you need it. Well, it's a good strategy. Well, look, it's it's a win it can be a winning strategy and in this case it was um it was on Prokhorovka. Um yeah, just it came down to a 1v1 and the the clock ticked down. Um, and Action X came away with the win there, but but yeah, like Panthers took both wins on Ghost Town and a defensive win on Prokhorovka as well. So it's that was uh, good good to see the, the well for me it was good to see the Panthers get up and get a win, especially with that that four way tie for first going into this round. Um, and Action X was the one of the other teams that were tied for for first there. So. Uh, it was a hard battle, and I think I mean, was it this round I th- or last the previous round before this one. I think Action X were coming off um, beating. No, it was the Matildas they beat that week, but the week before they'd beaten the Sentinels. So, look, Action X are no slouch themselves, and I'm sure we'll be seeing them coming finals. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the the next game we had uh, was between the Sentinels and the Comets. 
So once again, like this, this is the reigning champions versus the um, the the newcomers. So like, honestly, was expecting this one to be a four 0 whitewash in the favour of the um, of the Sentinels, but. Full credit to the Comets. Like I keep saying, like they bring these strats and they take advantage of certain situations. So like there was an early fight here on Cliff. Um, just tanks heading in the same same direction. Comets were rolling in a little bit of numbers. Uh, well, Action X, sorry, not Action X, Sentinels had only sent a few of their tanks there. So they'd gotten an overmatch straight away and were able to get a, a, a three for one trade, I think it was in the end. And there was just some really good um focus fire and isolation by the comets and they they took this win pretty bloody quickly um so that was really cool to see uh unfortunately the other three games the sentinels kind of kind of went cool 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 that happened it's not going to happen again um and yeah they they uh they took it took the win three one there as well but like i said it's i like that the comets are bringing these these different strats and taking advantage of things where they can so they're not they're not they're being competitive and and like there was always that worried because the the b league competition and the premier league competition are two very different comps and there was always the fear that the comets would come up and just be trounced every week um and and yeah getting the the tiebreaker win in the first week was definitely a, a big thing for them um but and, but it's still good to see that they're, they're taking games and, you know, you see they're, they're a little bit excited and they're a little bit of characters, you know, PP Power. Yeah, I, I appreciated the uh, yeah. golf clap from, from uh, Power there. Yeah, but also I don't know if you saw any shirt. He had a, um, it was a, like a... Jesus a, a, died for our bins. Yeah, but, but it's like a head of an ibis. So like or yes. bin, bin chicken as they're affectionately called here in, in Australia, you know. Yeah, it's a... Um, but yeah, so... Once again, it was a good showing from the Comets, but coming up against the Sentinels, it was always going to be a be a hard task. And they just showed the quality that they are. So the um, the last game of the night was a little bit of a surprise. So this was between the Scorpions and the Matildas. And the Matildas came out of the blocks hard to start with and took the first two games, um, which meant that the only way Scorpions were going to get any points were to take take it to a tie tiebreaker. Which they did. They won the next two games and did send it to the tiebreaker on Tundra here. Um, but Matildas were able to take the Scorpions, which was a little bit of a surprise considering where Matildas are at the moment. But uh, some good calling and some good focus fire just got the Matildas over the line in the end. And like being able to, to make the picks and isolate it, um, just take down enemies quickly before moving on to the next you know you can you can see they they went to where they were strongest with another couple of tanks on on the video that's playing at the moment um and taking out the the tanks there so like they've they've got a, a two a two v4 and um, which you should be winning any day of the week especially just here so well done to the matildas for picking up their first uh win of the season uh, they did pick up the points in the tiebreaker loss against the Comets, but this is their first win. So uh, um, hopefully that'll mean uh, uh, this is the start of their run back back up to maybe the the top four in the finals berth. Yeah, oh, I'm absolutely loving how dynamic this season is. Like mm. you, you can't pick now who's going to win, yeah. um, which makes it really exciting. Well, I, I also I still like the the changes to the the tanks as well. Like the new patch has made it a little bit more. Uh, chaotic as people test stuff out like the amx m m four fifty four is uh is is showing up a little bit more now and there's a tank destroyer tank the minotauro that's coming out a bit more now too uh but uh, also the new map with the siegfried line although we didn't see the siegfried line last week so that was uh that was an an interesting one i don't know it, um why that was maybe maybe teams are kind of worked worked out the strats and they they've scrimmed it enough or maybe they're holding something in reserve in yeah potentially mm. potentially it's always interesting when the meta changes to seeing who adapts um, the most quickly so yeah yeah that's it so um 
So we did talk about the results, but you can see it here. Panthers defeating Action X 3-1, uh, Sentinels beating the Comets 3-1, and the Matildas taking the tiebreaker win against the Scorpions 3-2, which means interesting things for the latter, because like going in, you would probably would have penciled in Scorpions for the win there, um, which means we would have had three teams equal first. But now we've only got two teams equal first, which... Uh, which is an, an an interesting way, like I said, going into the final round of the round robin here. It's um, yeah, no, I'm I'm, it's spread it out a little bit more. Um, fortunately, the comets have gone back down to to last with only their tiebreaker wins there for the points. Um, but I mean, it's put Matildas one win away from getting in a top four spot, and um, only two wins away from from third, really, depending on what happens with the Scorpions. Um, so it was a it's it's made it a lot more interesting and it's one of the things that's sort of been a hallmark of the last couple of seasons of the ANZ PL is being able to teams being able to come from last or second last in the last round to make it into finals. It it's okay. it just makes the competition that much more exciting and makes every game matter more. Um, it does. It really does. Mm. I mean, I'm disappointed about the loss this week, but I am excited for the separation of the of the mm. leaderboard. Um, and you know, you're exactly right. The bottom two teams are only you know two win, two wins away from mm -hmm. being a mix again. So it's uh, nothing's out of reach at the moment. That's it. So let's have a look at the fantasy team. Um, so you can see here, Matilda's because they, they got to play that extra round on the tiebreaker. They've um, got a couple of players in it. Dark's only two star. Like if if you I, I, hang on, I'm going to go change my fantasy league team because normally I have Raspberry in there because he's a good two star pick. But Dark is a really good player and like a core player of the um, the Matildas lineup. Um, he's an ex Brisbane Bulldogs player, and for him to only be two stars there, but that's that's a little bit mind boggling. I might have to change that up a little bit. Shuffle things around. Yeah, but um, but no no surprise to see Whippet there, and like I said. Raspberry again. We were talking bef before the show, and like Raspberry's a good two star pick. Like he's always features pretty pretty well in the rankings. Um, and M Madhouse from the Panthers and the return from the Sentinels. So those those players you're always gonna, but like, they they will farm up a storm given a chance. Um, yeah. I did. There was. I, and I haven't got it up at the moment, but there were a number of other players that scored more points than Raspberry, but because of the um, the limit on only being allowed to select two players from the same team and the, the star limit of 18 stars, uh, they weren't, weren't selected. So this was the best team you could have had under those conditions. Um, so how did you go with your picks this week? I did pretty well, actually. Um, I think I, I haven't had a look... Oh, recently, but I'm pretty sure I went up a few more spots. So uh, didn't get the didn't get the gold for weekly top, but you know that that's always going to be a bit of a, a long <laughs> shot there. But um, but so yeah, it looks like you went up three places to mm -hmm. 26 now, yep. um, and I'm at 34. I'm appreciating that more people are joining. So mm -hmm. the tail end are people that are a couple weeks <laughs> behind. Hopefully, I'll be able to stay ahead of them. <laughs> that's it. It, so the um the winner of I think it, it's it's there's some gold up for grabs for the the best uh, best performer uh, of the round and well actually JS from the Panthers got the best weekly score there but being a player he's not eligible for that so there was Pul Pulham was the uh, the top top getter after that so he had one thousand three hundred and seventy eight points uh, as opposed to what was it. 1,601.2 was the absolute best. And just, just for record, JS got 1,520.3. So he uh, oh my he did really well in, in, yeah. in that one. Um, but yeah, in in terms of overall leadership, Toddy339, who I think is a B-League player, is, um, is up there at the moment. So he's got an average score of 1,301.6. So that's... Uh, that's some pretty damn good stuff. And JS jumped 10 spots. So he's in third at the moment. So that's uh, 
that that's really cool. I, I like like seeing it. And one of my favorite names of all time, Runaway Brave Sir Robin, um, who is who has been drafted <laughs> into the B League this year, and I cannot wait to see the casters struggle that's with an that name. Amazing name. I know. <laughs> And I, I just hope everybody else has watched enough Monty Python to be able to get that one as well. But yeah, like I love, I just love that name. That's cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, so let's uh, have a look ahead to the matches happening this Friday. So the Comets are taking on your Action X there, Natty. So uh, chance for some redemption after the loss against uh, Panthers. Maybe a chance for the Comets to pick up more points. You never know. We'll see, yeah. see how that oh, goes. I- yeah, yeah. I love that it's kind of in the air. Like, you can't make your predictions, but, mm. yeah. Um, and, of course, then we've also we've got the Sentinels versus the Matildas. Um, I think, like, once again, fingers crossed, the Matildas sort of came out of a little bit of a slump there with that tiebreaker win over the Scorpions. So uh, maybe they'll they'll have a... Have another whack at the Sentinels and see see what they can do. So like this this is a a season three champion team in the Matildas. Most of the players in that Matildas lineup are from that season three team. So look, there's there's no reason that they can't adjust and uh, get. Although there is the like um I think it was in the interview with Dongalord last week or the week before where he mentioned well you're still missing Bales from that lineup and he is a, a very key player. Um, and yes, yes, he is. But like the other players are no slouches as well. So uh, we'll see how they go there. And then in the last game of the night, we've got the Panthers versus the Scorpions, which I think is going to be the game of the night. Um, traditionally, Panthers have struggled against Scorpions, but I think uh, I think this is going to be the one where where we they might show up and see how the both Bales and Madhouse, in addition to JS and God Mode um Gooba and Twit like those those that team together just seems to be playing really well and um yeah I, I think that there's a chance that they could take Scorpions this week mm. yeah that that's definitely a, an exciting one to watch this week mm-hmm. and the Scorpions themselves are no slouch though too let's let's not forget about them um JT is a great shot caller and when you've got Aussie and Russian Nate Palmer backing him up and Knight as well backing him up like there's there's some really good players there so yeah definitely going to be a, a, the the one to watch at the end of the the round five games there and the end of the first round robin so after that we'll go back into um the the double round robin and all the teams will get to play again so it's going to be very exciting Mm. But I hear there's some other ANZ there, Hanks excitement coming our way next week. There is, because the B League starts next week. I I love watching the B League because like the the Premier League is you know it's the league. There's there's strats there, but B League always comes up with something new, and I'm excited to see it. Um, there's a new team coming in this season because um, with the Comets going up. Uh, Brisbane uh, Bulldogs were supposed to come down, but unfortunately that team disbanded. Uh, so they're bringing back the Lismore Leopards, I think, um, but also the introduction of a new team, the Fremantle Fireflies. So another oh, another WA team. That's exciting. Yeah. So we'll get to get to see them kick off on Monday. I uh, believe at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So we can get on there, have a look at that. And, of course, it's another uh, another fantasy league that we can get into and, and have a look. And oh, see. excellent. Um, but, yeah, so looking forward to seeing that come Monday night. Um, cannot wait. Well, well, you'll have to help me with my picks for the B League. I'm only just mm. starting to get my head around yeah. the names for the, for the Premier League. So... Mm. I, I, it looks like the um, the B League season four taunt, um, fantasy isn't quite up just yet, but yeah, definitely some some, uh, some teams to watch out for for that. Like I always like Bad Boy Bubbles from um, from the Badgers because the Badgers were the runners up last season. They were a bit of, they were a brawling team, so they had the capacity to either really farm up a storm or to um, get found out fairly quickly in game, but. Like it's uh it's definitely a definitely a uh a team to watch there and like seeing the new new teams in the Fireflies and the Leopards are were an existing team but they um unfortunately weren't in the league last season and they brought them back for for season four of the ANZ B League but it's very exciting I can't wait to see it 
Oh, like, what are you going to do with tanks multiple times a week? I'm going to get double my enjoyment. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that was that was some fun stuff happening there with the tanks. So we, you know, halfway through the ANZ Premier League season with the B League starting. But there's, that's not all that we've got for you. So we've actually seen one day of play has already happened in the APAC South Division Rainbow Six um, League. So this is stage three that's going on at the moment. Um, we do have two Australian teams in the APAC South Division, the Knights and Wildcard Gaming. So um, be good to see them. There's... Uh, some other teams from the from uh, Asia Pacific there that I don't recognise the flags for, if I'm being honest. But um, but there are a, a, a lot there. And on the one day of gaming, Elevate is currently sitting on top of the the ladder. There, they beat the Knights seven um, one. Oh wow! So with uh, with the round difference, which is how they differentiate between them, Elevate sitting on top, and unfortunately Knights sitting on the bottom. Um, but Wildcard Gaming is sitting second because they had a 7-4 win over Tide. Um, oh, congratulations to them. So that's that's just based on the first day play. So there's still uh, still a few more to go. So it looks like there's, there's seven days of play in, it looks like just a general round robin to begin with. Um, and the second day of play is taking place uh, today. And then there's one every week after that. So uh Keep in touch with that. It's going to be fun to see see where it ends up. And I believe the winner of this gets entry into the six major. Yeah. Gosh. I feel like I've let the Rainbow Six events slip slip off my radar a little bit this year mm. just because there's been so much going on with uh, um, esports events right. locally. So mm. it's it's exciting to see that all coming back and it's, around. Yeah, I cannot wait. And like because there's all there's always something esports are going on and and it's great to see the um the the majors for rainbow six coming along as well there and um it looks like this is this is a round robin so there won't be any finals afterwards um so it's just who the top two will go through twenty thousand dollar us prize money for first and ten thousand for second so it's uh it's a it's some pretty good cash on the line there for for the eventual winners. Yeah, yeah, but definitely not anything to sneeze out there. That's right. That's it. And um, and even like third third gets six grand, and fourth gets almost five grand. Even the the last place will go away with two point two grand. So it's you know not bad for a, a couple of weeks. Well, a couple of weeks. It's more like a, it ends up being a month because <laughs> the last last uh, round of play happens on the 27th of october um but definitely definitely worth a watch and of course we've got world starting soon um for it's only around the corner isn't it It seven days away uh yes seven days away starting next thursday the 29th of september you you know what i was thinking guess Mm. where we're gonna be that day uh that day yeah on the tw- the twenty ninth, where are we going to be? In Melbourne, are we going to be in Melbourne, is or is that the week after? A, it's the week after. Oh yeah. man! But that's okay because it'll still it'll still be going on after then. I'm sure we can find it somewhere like the GG Easy Bar or Fortress Melbourne will surely be showing it. Yes. Sorry, I'm oh keen. I'm super keen. Oh that's what I've been I'm thinking just... about all week, but I got my dates wrong. <laughs> and and you, and you know what? That, that would be so amazing because there will be lots of other video game fans around in bars geared to video games. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm keen on that now. Like I, we were sort of planning like a a Goa team meetup so all the people that work for Goa on the Thursday night. But now I'm thinking, oh, I want to go watch this. We'll have to see what would, time the games are. Yeah, because it's in the in the US, so I think like a a late night game is probably going to be the uh, the play. But I'm all right for that. Yeah, I, I reckon. Hopefully, the timing will work out. We'll get dinner, and then mm-hmm. there'll be a game. The Chiefs will be playing. That's yep. what I'm hoping for. Cannot wait. <laughs> that. Wait for that. But um, one of the fun things that you found, Natty, was there was a um, a guide released by Dot Esports. For a casual fan's guide to who to root for at the 2022 League of Legends World Championship. Yeah, I love articles like this. I know you do as well. Yeah. Just because it's it's really hard to wrap your head around it. And especially if 
you're really embedded in esports, how do you get your friends to take interest mm. and, and find interesting things um, to get involved with? And, and this guide's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what the first one on there is, if you like chanting USA, USA at sporting <laughs> events, then go for Evil Geniuses. Yes. <laughs> and, and I especially like that the first line after that heading is, I can do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Bit yes. of Captain America love right there. Although there there is one thing that I, I'll take a little bit of issue with because they had one in there. If you like rooting for underdogs, then root for GAM Esports, which in fairness, this is the Vietnamese team and due to COVID, they haven't able to been able haven't been able to attend, I think, any esports events for a while, or at very least League of Legends esports events. Cause... Yeah, I think they've been absent for the last two years. Mm. So um, it, it's definitely an underdog story for them to be to be back in the mix. Mm. But I think that I think there's another underdog region that I'd rather go for to start with, though. I, uh, I think so. Too. Yeah, I, 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 think, um... I think we've got a special interest there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And for those playing along at home, we're going for Chiefs at at uh, from the L- LCO that have made it in there. So that's that's our underdog that we're rooting for. And like we said really? last week, there's a good chance that for them to get out of playing stages because they're a really good team. They only dropped one game the whole of the LCO split to 2022, including finals. Only one team was able to take a game away from them. Um so it's going to be exciting, but yeah, you can see that that uh, that guide on dot esports there. So um, lots of cool stuff because like it's one of the things I love about uh, esports in general, but in particular League of Legends. Like the teams seem to have a lot of personality and will just do silly things. You know? Yeah, I, I, that was even one of the categories in the guide, mm. wasn't it? So yep. if you if you like the uh, teams that have a fair amount of personality, mm. um, the Brazilian team loud and. Uh, they had Cloud9 in there as well, who's the other yeah. North American team to, mm-hmm. to go for if you, if you like a bit of uh, uh, oh, what, what, how well, did they describe it? Was, it? Was, if you like trash talkers and passionate yeah. players, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. Which again, I think the Aussies tend to do a pretty good job with a little bit of a little, little bit of respect a little bit. trash talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, but they a lot of them kind of say it like really deadpan. And, yes, and especially with Chiefs, I think a lot of them are more sort of reserved. Yeah, I th- um, I don't. I'm trying to think of like, was it Bulldog from? Oh, who did he play for? I can't remember now, but he seemed to be a really good personality for the LCO. That just like having a bit of bit of chat and like, and Rogue is always fun to to see. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have lots of lots of fun players in the region. Yeah, yeah, very very good. And that's starting next week. So yes, definitely get around that. Follow follow your favorite team at play-ins, and hopefully it's Chiefs because there's no other real answer there. It's yeah, it's Chiefs. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping we'll have get-togethers in the Discord server again mm. with our with our friend Mercury to to help us with all the background stats. He's good with his uh, uh his league history. That's it, and good good with his because he's he, yeah he's uh he's a caster for various sports, but I think his passion is League of Legends, so he knows a lot yeah. about that. Um, but kind of kind of in this more sort of League of Legends, but also other esports, in particular OCE esports, uh, there was a an article that came out from the Australian uh, yesterday or the day before, I think, about um, about Order and their possible futures. Now, um, it's not looking good for Order. Um, the the review by the um, auditor. Um, I think it's auditor. I'm not. I'm not sure of the financial terms, but the, who, whoever they'd appointed um, when order went into voluntary administration, there, um, the creditors have voted to wind up the company. Uh, I, I li- after li- uh, the liquidator um, made the recommendation, so yeah, that kind of means that order will most probably won't exist as a company anymore, which is a big blow for Australian esports. Yeah, it's it's absolutely huge that. You know, that's the recommendation that's come down. I know there are a lot of, you know, stats and figures thrown around just, you know, they, they were just making incredible losses compared to um, what they were able to, to bring in. So not, obviously not sustainable to to continue as a company, which is, yeah, sad, disappointing. They were kind of like the poster child of, you can do it. You can yeah. make it in esports. Yeah. 
It, it is very sad. And Order in particular is such a strong organisation um, in terms of, of the teams that they were fielding. Uh, just in terms of LCO, they sent a team to MSI earlier this year. Um, and yet they finished third in split three. It's And not to mention the other, all the other teams and the other very esports that they, they had. It's... it's 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 very sad to to see it happen, and I hope that the players manage to find another uh, an, an, another home. Yeah, I mean, I know we were speculating last uh, podcast a little bit about you know the the bliss building a new team mm. for the OCO. Maybe some of those players can jump across. Mm. Um, well, but it also means that there's an if if when this goes through that there'll be another uh, another franchise available in the LCO as well. So. Yeah, you ne- never know what's what's going to happen there. Hope um, maybe they'll find another team to come in, get some interest to, uh, and maybe pick up those players and and form another team. Yeah, hopefully. Um, mm. uh, well, I think that that's all the the stuff we had to talk with you guys about tonight. So thank you so much for joining us, uh, for watching on Twitch TV slash Game on Oz, or if you were listening to this on your various podcast platforms, thank you very much. We very much appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, that that's about it. Got nothing nothing else to finish up with, Natty. No, no. Thank you as always for a lovely chat, mm-hmm. and looking forward to Worlds next week. Very much so. Can't wait for that, and we'll catch everybody around.